Sometimes you can go to the lab and uh, you collect some data and you want to understand whether, let's say, you did your experiment two times, three times, four times, whichever number of replicates, if they really are similar or how different they are. The best way to find out this is by you being able to carry out some calculations on the standard deviation of the data and you can also include some error bars for the data so i've got some data here that i'm just going to paste into this sheet here here in this case uh, <clears throat> this experiment involved recording the concentration so let's say you're determining the protein concentrations in a protein or the sugar in a given drink or glucose or things like that so you've actually been able to collect some data where in the first column here we've got your concentration data where you're moving or increasing the concentration let's say from zero all the way to a thousand let's say milligram per mil so i'm just going to make here to have my um my date to have some value on that data so let's say it's milligram per mil <clears throat> then you have the first absorbance so there's just the first the absorbance for the first experiment and then we have the absorbance for the second experiment or, or our, our, our second replicate, sorry. And then we have absorbance where you did this experiment the third time. So you can see from what we have here, the data seems to be rather quite reproducible, but you can never really tell until you've tried to find out any significant differences from here. So the first thing I'm going to show you how to do will be to determine, let's say, the averages. So here I'm just going to put the main absorbance values. You can calculate the mean so easily in Excel. What you just need to do is click equals to, and then you have average. So you see here, if you just type AV, average comes in. So you can just double click, and then you select the cells where you want to find the average of the data. Uh, close the, uh, the bracket and click on enter. And there you find your average mean absorbance for the first uh, um, concentration was 0.4316. You can always also try to minimize those numbers. So you just have, let's say, like three and uh, um, three decimal places rather than having all those values that you have here. So if you just right click on here where, where there's a plus arrow that comes up, you will copy the formula and then you'll get all the values reproduced until you get to your final 1000 milligram per mil concentration. The other thing that you can do is to try and find what is called the standard deviation. So I'm just going to put uh, STDEV. How do you find that? Again, you're just going to equals to, I'll just type STD. Usually there are so many different standard deviations, but I'm just going to pick this one here and then I'm trying to find the standard deviation for those three values. Again, enter. If I, uh, I can also copy the value in and then it shows me the standard deviations for all the different samples. So you see like it shows your error between the two, three measurements was quite pretty, very low comparing to the values that you have. So if I want to plot this data again, simply just do a simple scatter plot. So I'm going to go, um, I'll select the values for the concentration, and then I want to, cut, to plot them as a function of the main absorbance values. So go again to insert, then you do a simple scatter plot, and this is how our plot looks like. Again, we go into trying to make this make look a little bit more, more better. So we want to get our R squared value. We want to get our trend line as well. So in this case, what I just going to do is right click, get your trend line. And here we want to find our display the R squared. And then we want to display also the equation of that, that, uh, that, that trend line. So if I close that and bring this one here, you can see, so here you've got your, um, 
you have your y equals to mx plus c. Um, in that case, you can actually be able to use those values to calculate the different, um, let's say, if you know your, your absorbance values, you can actually be able to calculate the unknown. Let's say you don't know your concentration. In this case, you just plug in the information. So if you know the absorbance value, let's say why, uh, just example, why you know is, uh, 0 point, let's say, 534. Uh, based on this information that you have, you can actually be able to calculate for X. So you just plug in that information. So it's going to be 0 0.534 in this case equals to um, 0 0.001 and then X and then you need a plus 0 point four seven zero two so we're trying to kind of i'm gonna bring an error message but that's just because i put everything here together but i just wanted to show you like the different values that we're going to look at for anyway the first the other thing that we can do is just make y uh, to make x then become the subject of that equation so in this case which means it's going to be your y um uh, you're going to look to be looking at your your y which is 0 0.534 and then you in, you subtract is going to be equals to 0 0.534 so you're bringing these um the C, you're bringing it towards the Y, so just instead of being plus C, it's going to be minus 0 0.4702. And then uh, what, what you get here will be your value. So that's the, the difference between these two. And then you divide that. So this is going to be equals to that divided by your, um, your M value, which in this case is 0. 0, 0, 001 and that gives you your x so in this case your x which is your concentration is going to be 63.8 but again just remember you have to label your graph so go to design add chart labels here primary is going to be your concentration which is milligram per mil and then your x-axis, again, if you're going to be adding the chart uh, titles, is going to be your absorbance. It depends at which nanometer that you, you measure that absorbance. So in this case, we've actually been able to find out your x, and here your x value is going to be a milligram per milliliter. But then I wanted to show you when you have these values, how you can be able to add Erebus. So let's say you just click on those values here. You go into design, again into chart elements, and here you have the possibility of adding Erebus. So here you just scroll down and come to more Erebus options. This, uh, you come over here because you already know the standard deviation. So you want to use your error bars as your standard deviations. So you, when you click down here, you, you'll select on custom and then specify value. So in this case, both our positive and our negative error bars will be the same. So just click on there. And then once you down, you fill in that arrow, click on OK. And here you see you've got your error bars. So I've shown you how you can still be able to find your error bars in this case. And also you can be able to calculate for the value of the unknown. Again, you can also do the same thing if you don't like to have a scatter plot. Just go back into, um, you can come back here to design and change your chart type. So you go from having, let's say, you can have a column column chart in this case. And here you clearly can see your error bars. But because you're trying to find for your um, unknown or the concentration of the unknown, uh, in this case, the best chart for you to be plotting will actually be the scatter rather than having a column graph. So hopefully I've shown you a couple of things from to this uh, short clip. One, I've shown you how you can be able to calculate mean. So again, if I, I just repeat on that or reiterate, equals to average, and you can actually be able to find the mean of your values. 
You can also be able to find the standard deviation, how these values differ from each other. And here you find the standard deviation is like, um, if just equal again, standard deviation. I've shown you, you can use that values that you've selected to be able to draw or plot your graph. Once you've plotted your graph, you can actually add the error bars. So by just going into, um, again, design, chart elements and then selecting the error bars so if you know what you have already you can always uh, just come into the custom specifier value and you have your error bars and you can also of course uh, be able to um, rectify these or other to be able to amend that if you want to really amend your error bars and then also I've shown you how once you know the values that you, uh, you, you have your known you can actually use that data to calculate for your unknown in this case and hopefully this should actually provide some ways for you to be able to carry out these different calculations.